Reputation is the cornerstone of power. Through reputation alone, you can intimidate and win. Once it slips, however, you are vulnerable and will be attacked on all sides. This is such a powerful concept that Robert Greene made the fifth law of power. So much depends on your reputation, guard it with your life, and this is especially true within the context of the Mafia. In this episode on Bully Whispers, we will examine Law 5 in The Sopranos primarily, though not exclusively, through the most obvious example of a reputation gone bad, Vito Spadafor, who worked his way up from contractor to capo, He's a come-from-behind kind of guy. until his reputation was ruined when Finn confirmed certain uncomfortable realities about him. However, the power of reputation is still on display here, as even while Finn is essentially destroying Vito, he's still terrified of him. He's not going to know I told you? You ain't going to have no problem from Vito, believe me. What are you going to do? So what I'm going to do is sneak up on it and jam my thumb in its butt open. Of course, we know that by that time, Vito had already gathered some cash and left town in an attempt to start a brand new life in New Hampshire. Free mustache rides! But there is so much more of Law 5 to be seen in Vito's story than just the ending, so we will go back in the series, before he was a capo, a big earner, or even a big deal, but not so far back that he was a random nobody in a bakery. Starting with his stint under Richie April, we will examine how Vito rose up the April crew by building his reputation the right way according to Law 5, while also checking out comparisons with, and lessons learned from, its previous capos such as Richie April, Gigi Sestone, and Ralph Cifaretto, before examining Vito's time as a captain, as well as the actions of Tony Soprano and Phil Leotardo in response, both of whom had their own reputations to worry about. When first starting to build a reputation for yourself, Robert Greene says that you must focus on gaining renown for one outstanding quality, such as generosity, cunning, etc., which is what we see out of Vito from the beginning, except in his case, it's as a hard worker who gets things done. She's got her problems, but I'm not going to tell Richie this is not getting done. Now, this may seem both minor because he wasn't a big player in the series yet, and ironic because he doesn't end up finishing it, but it was enough to satisfy and begin building a reputation with his boss at the time, Richie April. Richie's reputation, which was quite fitting, was that of a basic thug, and while that may help tremendously when dealing with terrified citizens, it's less than useless when up against someone who isn't intimidated like Tony Soprano. It stops today. You got it? Don't give me your fucking Manson lamps. Just fucking stop. Either way, Richie died because he didn't know Law 19, but that's a different episode, and his replacement was Gigi Sestone. Now by this point, Vito had earned a place in the room, and later on the bathroom, but with Gigi, we see sort of an inverse of Richie in terms of reputation. As Tony points out when talking to Junior, Gigi was respected for many things, but obviously a pension for violence was not one of them. If he had the same demeanor as Richie, and not been the calm presence that he was, there is no way the crew would have dissented in the way that they did. The fear of retribution would be too great. This dissent never amounted to anything though, because Gigi died on the toilet, but nevertheless, Vito got to see firsthand what can happen if you don't have a fearsome reputation. Fortunately for him, under his new capo Ralphie, he steps into the role of Hitman, where he develops a reputation as someone who can manifest out of thin air in order to take out a target, a reputation fans still remember to this day. Unfortunately for him, Benny Fazio, criminal mastermind, seems to have picked up the manifestation trick somewhere along the way and used it to corner him at the beach house, but that happens later. Aside from moving up the ladder, there is also one important lesson regarding reputation that Vito would have learned from Ralphie that you can get away with a lot if you have a reputation as an earner. We depend on this guy. There are millions of dollars at stake. When he finally does get his chance to take the wheel of the April crew, Vito makes sure Tony knows he's an earner by laying it on extra thick. Not only is he in charge of approving bids for all city contracts, he's also a degenerate horse player. So he'll play ball. He's fucking Joe DiMaggio. Even while maneuvering behind Tony's back, because Vito doesn't just want to be a capo, he wants to be boss. Green expresses that when trying to cultivate that type of reputation, you should start off slow and then watch it grow, which is exactly what we see from Vito. Unlike Richie April, who comes out like a bull in a china shop and basically asks Albert Boris about taking out Tony, Vito passively plants a seed in an upset Gene Pontecorvo's ear. I'm a top earner now. It's not out of the realm of possibility that I could be the boss of this family one day. Leaving him to ponder it but not for very long. When Tony is shot and in the hospital shortly thereafter, 
Vito again begins planting seeds, this time a little more directly, but still not coming right out and saying, make me boss. Point is, Tony goes, let's face it, somebody's gonna have to step into the breach. Unfortunately for Vito, Tony wakes up, ending that window of opportunity, but while he was out, Vito and Polly came across a big score and had been withholding the cash from Carmela. After Tony wakes up, Vito and Polly scramble to put the money together and rush to give it to Carm. During the exchange, she notices the look on their faces as they are leaving and has a brief epiphany. Mm, I don't know how you do it. She was beginning to realize how hard it actually was to get money from those guys and that she only got it because Tony woke up. This only goes to underscore the importance of reputation in that life and show how powerful Tony's must have been that even in a vegetative state, he was respected. Unfortunately for Vito, his arch nemesis Vin Detrolio confirmed certain rumors about him shortly thereafter, and the two main people responsible for resolving the situation, Phil Leotardo and Tony, both have reputations of their own at stake. Phil is an old school gangster to whom image and reputation are of the utmost importance. So much so, that seeing Johnny Sack cry made the difference between him towing the line despite his brother's murder and going behind Johnny's back making deals. With Vito, however, Phil possibly has other concerns due to their theorized sexual relationship the two previously had, and he didn't want that information to get out. Unfortunately for Phil, he needs a reason to get involved in Soprano family business, and that certainly can't be it. What he does have is the fact that Vito is married to his cousin, which he uses to get his foot in the door. As for Tony's perspective, he has personal reasons, such as greed, which come into play here, and Vito's reputation as an earner almost saved his life. So I'm going to burn that kind of dedication? It's hard to believe I couldn't get something more out of him if he would have come back. But relevant to this discussion is the effect his actions may have on his reputation as boss, which is even more important at the time since he just got out of a coma and people were questioning him where they hadn't before. In order to reassert his leadership, Tony can't allow himself to be pushed around, least of all by people in his own crew. Well, it's not their fucking decision who they work with. With Phil, however, there is another issue at stake. While the normal obligation to have his capo's backs didn't apply here because nobody wanted to be associated with Vito at that point, Tony must also show strength towards other families, and he saw Phil's move for what it was. It's not about Vito, it's about me. Phil's saying he can do whatever the fuck he wants, including kill a captain in my own family, and I can't do a fucking thing about it. And a non-lethal form of retaliation was mentioned. Unfortunately for all involved, Fat Dom made some jokes, and with one about Carlo in particular... My mistake. Carlo's lipstick was on Vito's car. The non-lethal ship had officially sailed. Final notice time. Ultimately, while you can see both the concern for and the effects of reputation in almost every character, None of them demonstrate how quickly one can change and how disastrous it can be better than Vito Spadafore. Who knows what kind of boss he could have been if he had been given a shot. Well, thanks for watching everybody. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.